All right, everyone, the day before yesterday, of course, I had made a Substack article talking about what to expect on January 6th. Essentially, it was one long theatrical performance. It was propaganda by the legacy media and their explicit partners, I think you would agree, based on video two of today on Biden's comments and the astroturfing there. Uh, it was for political reasons. Biden at the moment is being hailed. Oh, my God, it was such a great speech. He's unifying the nation. Here's the best lines from his speech. It's of Hamilton came out to literally give a theatrical performance at Pelosi's behest. Um, and from start to finish, it was lies, half lies, and, and you know, other untruths. It was pointless. Essentially, you've got an attempt to create a sort of weird quasi-inversion national holiday out of a single riot that took only a couple of hours. All of the previous riots that caused dozens of deaths, billions of dollars in damage, including in D.C., by the way, to the point where Secret Service was having dozens of its members injured, none of those are apparently meaningful. But now, the liberals have officially lost their friggin' minds. And by this, I don't mean the leftoids. They're seeing through it. Gravel Institute posted about it, and other leftoid groups... The liberal groups, like, you know, the Lincoln Project liberals, the, the stuffy ones, like the, the Brian Griffin knockoffs, they've lost their minds. They are applauding Dick Cheney for showing up at the Capitol and being there for the moment of silence along with his moron sellout neocon daughter who has Trump derangement syndrome. And again, the only reason she's participating in this horseshit is because of the fact that she wants to politically grandstand. Her, her time in Wyoming is limited. She's not going to be re-elected. She knows that. But she can be a consultant. She can make the TV circuit. She can probably get a legacy media slot. She'll be like Juan Williams or something like that. She can be the uh, token so-called conservative. Maybe she'll work on The View. I I'm still, jury's still out. She might actually take up that fifth slot there. Uh, I wouldn't even be surprised. Now, <clears throat> link in the description archived, of course, to this, because it's just completely crazy. And as a millennial who was there during the Bush administration, I'll explain my particular thoughts. But also down below, keep in mind there will be a pinned comment if you're watching this video on YouTube with links to other video hosting sites that I use. Keep in mind I make exclusive content every single day that does not go on YouTube. Um, as new tech virgins, uh, it's growing very quickly especially Rumble at the moment, um, and, and Getter, uh, there's no reason to really prioritize old tech. Um, I think when Truth Social comes out next month, I'll be talking about that probably tomorrow, their, uh, their deadline, um, I, I think that old tech is going to have some problems over the next few years, which is good. Uh, it's good to have the, the competition to the uh, increasingly stifled platforms that are sanitized more and more. Here's the thing. As a millennia, as someone who's Old enough to remember the Bush admin, but young enough so that, you know, I'm not off my rocker like a boomer or something. Here's what Dick Cheney represents. Dick Cheney represents warmongering and corruption and lack of transparent government and torturing people in, in secret CIA camps and things like that. Dick Cheney is not a good man. He is a traitor to the country. He is a war pig. He is a piece of filth, a piece of fucking garbage, and so is his fucking whore daughter. That's the truth about Dick Cheney and his whole goddamn family. The apple didn't fall far from the tree. These people are vicious, globalistic, venture capitalist hawks who make money off of blood. Dick Cheney, his Halliburton buddies, how many, how many dollars, how many little Benjamins did they make off of killing a bunch of Iraqi children? You're expecting me to believe that I should take it seriously uh, when liberals say, well, I never believed I would agree with Dick Cheney. Oh, I see. Uh, after all, he really is a patriot. <laughs> He's a defender of democracy. You're crazy. You're completely goddamn nuts. Dick Cheney, a defender of democracy. Look what he did in Iraq. Look what he did in Afghanistan. He was one of the main architects of these things. Look what happened all over the world as the result of foreign policy that in part Dick Cheney was part of creating. He was part of that planning process. Now, full disclaimer here, and I've said it for years, Bush was nowhere near as stupid as he played uh, as a role on TV. Essentially, George W. was a method actor. He wasn't dumb. He was very calculating, and he's a very evil man as well. His dumb guy shtick, 
does not take me in. He can sit there with the goofy Texan smile, although he was born and raised in a blue-blooded Connecticut uh, Yankee family. He can do that while sitting next to his, his retarded dog paintings all day if he wants to, uh, but it doesn't take me in. That doesn't lessen the fact that Dick Cheney was a big participant in the warmongering of the Bush administration. He and his daughter are evil. Straight up, flat out, evil individuals, they don't have a soul. Dick Cheney's has something like four hearts inside of his chest, and none of them have ever warmed up his greasy fucking forsaken soul. So when liberals, who apparently they've conveniently forgotten the Bush administration, come out and say, well, I guess he's not that bad after all, when if you seriously, this is your, your serious proposition, you think that Drumpf, evil orange man, so bad and so terrible, because you got told this by billionaires, by the way, by the legacy media, so bad that Dick Cheney actually has someone you can positively compare him to. Dick Cheney, the 500,000 dead Iraqi civilians, did that Dick Cheney. Dick, uh, you know, sitting in the bunker, shadow president, effectively, Cheney. Dick, CIA black sites, Cheney. Dick, Gitmo should be expanded, Cheney. Dick, waterboarding is perfectly fine, Cheney. That Dick Cheney, uh, you're going to exonerate him because he came out and said he doesn't like Orange Man. And this is not the first time it's happened. They did it with W. W is now accepted by liberals as a great American president, a patriot, a defender of democracy. Yeah, let alone literally a million problems during his presidency. Just, just ignore that. Ignore the bubble that he helped to pop. Ignore the, you know, the housing crisis. You know, the Great Recession thing. Ignore the Merck contractors of Blackwater. Ignore the attempt to undermine the Fourth Amendment by spying on library records. Ignore the birth of the modern surveillance state. Ignore Iraq. Ignore Afghanistan. Ignore everything that he did wrong out of either malevolence or incompetence, which was basically everything he did. He said he doesn't like Drumpf, so he's one of us. He's a good guy. Apparently, you could be Hitler, and you run for office, manage to get in somehow in some extreme white nationalist district out in Montana, and as long as you come out and say, I'm not comfortable with Donald Trump, I think we need to hold a vote to prevent him from ever holding office again, you'll get applauded by supposedly liberal, enlightened individuals. This is, actu this is the actual threat to democracy. People have been taken in by so much corporate propaganda and so much globalistic demagoguery that as long as a person worships at the altar of Trump was evil and tried to overthrow the government, all of their past sins are forgiven. They can do and say whatever they want other than that, and it's perfectly fine because the only people that will stand against that, and this is the most odd of political bedfellows in fucking bed together, people who are core fans of Trump, populists, MAGA hat wearers and stuff, People like me who enjoy his policies with or without being hardcore support. And leftists. Gravel Institute leftists. I mean, they wouldn't support him either. If it came down to Trump v. Biden in 2024, they'd probably stay home. And that's not the most un unlikely of scenarios. Although Kamala or Booty Judge, I think, is more likely. They would lose too. The uh, evil orange man bad thing when they hyperbolically try to compare it to 9-11 and then they drag Dick Cheney out there, by the way, isn't that a little bit self-defeating? Dick Cheney, you're comparing it to 9-11, but Dick Cheney's there. Don't you see a little bit of irony here? All of the liberals that I knew 10, 15 years ago, anti-war and anti-censorship, that's, that's gone. Liberals are no longer anti-censorship. They're the book burners. They've, be, they've become what they used to fight. They've become what they most feared. In their haste to try to drown out the Nazis, the authoritarians, they become Nazis. They become authoritarians. They are the jackbooters. When, when I look at the things that they say, whether it's related to COVID or war or free speech online or anything, they have become basically like George W. Now, this isn't a surprise because, of course, there was always a much deeper connection between neolib and neocon before anyway. They were never pro-free speech or uh, against warmongering, against world policing or any of these other things. But there was at least an attempt to create a facade and liberal individuals, and to their credit, 15 years ago, when or, or, or thereabouts, uh, when the government didn't follow through with, hey, you know, we, we prefer peace. Hey, we don't believe in this domestic spying. And so when, when a reform was attempted, uh, liberal individuals would get on them if it, if it didn't go through. Now, the only thing that I see them really 
checking Biden on. The only thing that I see them have any fervor on is student loan debt forgiveness. That's it. They don't care about any of the other things happening. They just want freebies. They just want handouts from the government. Oh, give me debt relief. Crash the economy with no survivors. That's all they care about. No, no, no. They don't care about what's going on with, you know, China, the China virus. They don't care about that. They don't care about government corruption. They don't care about the obvious uh, 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 stupidity of the current economy, which is arguably more harmful than the student debt load to the average person. They don't care about these things. All they want is handouts. That's not the way yesteryear's liberals were. Some of us actually gave a shit that people were dying overseas. I don't think anyone gives a shit what Biden does at this point. It's clear that the liberals have sold out to the point where if he makes uh, uh, one fucking sloganeered, very, very carefully engineered line in a speech, he'll get astroturfed by the legacy media and a third of the population will fucking believe it and gobble it down like Andy Six's logs of shit. They don't care what he does. Because he's got a D after his name, and because they've been primed to believe that because he's not Orange Man, he's a great guy. To the point where they're applauding Dick Cheney. Think about how surreal it is. Take a time machine, go back ten years, and tell any liberal out there, hey, by the way, the Democratic Party is going to give a standing ovation to Dick Cheney in the future because he's not the, the other guy that they fear worse. They would laugh at you. They'd think it was a joke. They wouldn't believe you were a time traveler. They'd believe that you skipped one of your doses of antipsychotics. That's what would happen. <laughs> That's about all. Peace out.